were in truck parking spots and there was like another guy backed into one as well. And so I pulled in and, um, you know, like maybe I didn't have a whole lot of space in between me and the dumpster, but like, I mean, if you can't chuck a bag over the side of a dumpster, I don't know how the three inch difference at the front is going to change light for you. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So I thought I left room. I thought I left room. So yeah. And I, and I went in and I thought everything was cool. I, I got my pizza, got my wobbly pops and, um, um, you know, I was going to go buy a shower, got a shower, didn't use it because I ran back out so I wanted to make sure my dog was good. And then a uh, dumpster guy came at us and, um, you know, he got kind of ornery with me and was like, you guys got to move. I was like, why? Like, I can't. One, I'm over my hours. And, uh, and he's like, oh, I'll get the manager. I was like, cool. That's fine. Okay. okay. You know, get him. And uh, then the manager came out, and I had already been drinking with a couple other truck drivers there. Not gonna, not trying to out anyone, but I wasn't like drinking by myself. And we were chatting and shooting the shit about bullshit gas prices and whatnot. And the manager comes out, and in his exceptionally flamboyant hand gestures, told me that I had to move, or uh, he was going to call the police. Uh, I told him as politely as I could, while being a little angry about it. I was like, I mean. Do what you got to do, man. But I'm over my hours, and uh, I, I'm not going to do an illegal thing. Call the cops. If they say I can move, and they're not going to arrest me for moving out of your spot, and if they got somewhere for me to go, not a problem. I'll do it. But uh, without that, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. And then, uh, yeah, he went off in a huff, and then I was going to go to bed. And I was like, well, I don't want these cops waking me up and pissing my dog off. So I went in and I was like, okay, well, now there's already some animosity between us, I guess. So I'm going to, I'm going to record this for my safety and, you know, posterity. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Now, now let me ask you this. When you, when, when you went in there, you know, when you went in there, you, you already knew that it was going to be an issue between you and the manager anyway. Um, he knew that he wasn't going to be happy with me for sure, but right. I just wanted. You know what I mean? Okay, 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 okay. So you 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 honestly just went in there just to ask the manager, pretty much like why? I mean, you know, and you explained to him like, yeah. you know, you you're a Canadian driver, yada yada yada. I'm out of hours. I can't move. Did did it was it like that you went in there to just be like, look, man, um, you know, since I didn't know all this stuff and I'll know it on the next time I come, can you know, am I good to stay there? What? Yeah, that's, that's basically what I was after, right? I just wanted to know if he was calling the cops, and I wanted to talk to him to see if there was like some happy medium because I already offered to move the bins. Like, why have, if it's such a big deal to have those bins across three spots, why not put all the bins in one spot? There was an empty spot right there with a bin in it. You know what I mean? Okay. So, but then his attitude went all flip-flop on me as soon as he saw he was being recorded. And then went and acted like he had some magazines to rearrange and then threatened me again with the cops and ran into the back. I was like, well, I mean, that's content. All right. I got you. I got you. So... <laughs> how, how long how long was it before the uh, cops showed up on you? Well, after I left there and I went back to my truck, I mean, I figured, well, the cops are definitely coming now. And just just so we're clear, I wasn't drinking in my truck. I, the keys are not in the ignition. I wasn't in my truck. I was in the parking lot, you know, the four-pack, whatever, was on the ground outside. Like, that was it. You know, just I, chatting with people, and I didn't bring any alcohol in the truck. I wouldn't either. consider white claws like like hard, I know, hard I know. something like you hard. For that. You know, <laughs> I, I can understand yeah, if you but, had some like Budweiser or you know some 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 Magnum. I, I can understand if you had that in a parking lot. Then yeah, that would be that would be something of question. But white claws. 
I mean, there's seltzer water. I know, I know. Like, you know, I, I don't it's think. It's seltzer water with vodka. Right. I, I mean, I don't honestly think you're going to get in trouble for seltzer water. But. Well, and but that's, you said that's you, the thing. Like, but, I wasn't trying, right? So. But you said you had, you, you, you had, you knocked back a few, which, you know, you was being honest. So the cops show up. Yeah. So the cops show up. Uh, in the video, looked like it was like a couple of them, like what about four of them, four of them, five of them? Uh, yeah, there's three, three squad cars, four or five of them. Uh, it was a uh, local Damn. sheriff, they, right? They, like, and all they were told was that there's a trespasser refusing to leave. Okay, that's what so they that's, told me. So that's so that's what the manager pretty much told them yeah. that 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 you you was a trespasser now not not after the fact that you went in there you spent your money you brought you know you 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 brought some products out of the store so how are you a you know you're a trespasser i mean you just in the wrong spot and he considered you a trespasser yeah. wow that's yeah i know right man like I don't know if, uh, I can't remember in the video at all if you could tell, but there's a truck parked directly in front of me on the other side where their above ground tanks are. Right. And he's parked in a no parking spot. Like it's, it's one of those lined out spots, like don't park here. And one of the guys backed that dude into the spot and right. he was fine. Oh, okay. He's good. But and then now I'm getting, now I'm getting poo pooed on for being in front of a dumpster. Yeah. yeah you, you're a trespasser, but he's, He's yeah. illegally parked, though. <laughs> that's yeah. how it is. That's yeah. how it is at these at these truck stops, man. I mean, it's crazy that a lot of uh, that a lot yeah. of truck drivers, you know, make they make their own parking spot, bro. It's it's crazy. Well, it is yeah, crazy. Yeah, I've seen that all over the states. Like, there's there'll be all these trucks parked everywhere in spots, and then other guys will be like four ways on. All right, let's start lining up. People can still get past us all over the place. And it's cool at most places, like the TAs that I've been to, the love stops I've been to, even some of the Flying J's, even though their employees tend to get ornery once, you know, like five o'clock in the morning hits, they run around and start knocking on everyone's doors, like, get ready to go, because you're not supposed to be parked like this. And exactly, reason, because everybody else is trying to get the freak out. That's why. All right. So exactly. So uh, I I hear the cops in the video. They you know they doing the jargon. Keep your hands out your pocket. Let me go ahead and pat you down and all like that. But within that, w but within that whole conversation between you and the and the officer, I mean, what what did the officer say to uh, to you at during that conversation? Like, I mean, is you? I mean, well, were you uh, hey, had to move or what? Oh. What did they say? No, no, they they were trying, at one point, they were going to do a field sobriety test on me to see if I could move. But if you look in the video, at least the one I posted on uh, on my page, where, like, his, uh, Mr. Mai there, he chopped it up a bit, you know, just kind of getting the bare bones out of it, which, I mean, props to him for putting me out there. I love the man. Um, he, uh, uh, where are we going with this? Sorry, I lost my train of thought here. Uh, no, you, oh, no, you talked yeah, to the so, officer. Well, they were talking. Uh, when I was talking to the officers, like, I mean, they were having a hard time not laughing to be, to be honest with you. Like they, 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 and they, um, three, four times they mistook the dually one ton beside me with the trailer for my vehicle instead of the Kenworth that is mine with the 53 foot moving trailer on the back. And I kept telling them like, no, that's not my truck. This is the big, this is the semi big rig. That's my truck. And then they kept pointing to the, the the dually. I was like, no, this is me, off to the right here, this guy. So I I, I don't know. They they did their due diligence, their job well. They wanted to you know see if I could move, and they asked me, like, you know, they're telling me like you don't seem drunk, and I was like, well, that's amazing. I am, as far as like the law goes, but uh, they're asking me if I felt safe to drive. And I was like, I feel fine driving. I just don't feel fine being pulled over. And, you know, I'll lose my CDL, I'll lose my career. I own this truck. You know, I'm not a company driver. I'm, a, I'm an owner operator. So at the end of the day, I'm looking out for me and, you know, my career and the other people on the road before I give a damn about a dumpster and some pissed off hands on hips, hoity toity manager at a freaking. Flying J, Trust whatever. 
Wow. So yeah. so at the at the end of it all, they the the officer must have went back in, talked to the manager, and I guess came back out to you and just was like, All right, you 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 good there until in the morning, right? Yep. Yep. Was, you know, like I wasn't giving any attitude to the to the cops there, the sheriffs and I was being, you know, as forthcoming and honest as possible. And uh, at the end of the day, like, I wasn't causing any problems. So, it was like, they really couldn't do very much to me. They could have given me a, they could have given me a parking ticket, I guess. But, I mean, they were all pretty nice guys, and I was cooperative. And, I mean, that's how you don't go to jail, I guess. Well, I, I don't even, <laughs> I, I don't even think, I, I don't even think it's that, you know, as far as, you know, number one, you're on private property. I can understand if you was like on the street or if you was on the on the side of the road or something like that, or, or on you know or on the city property. But you're on private property. Yeah. I can understand. You know, they could turn around and be like, "Yo, you're trespassing." But how how are you trespassing if you're, you know, if you went in there, you're a trust stop. I mean, the only easy thing to yeah. do was just ask you ask you to move and you know and that's where i was going to segue my question was you know you did mention uh personal convenience and i was going to ask you why didn't you just use personal convenience to just move out the way but you pretty much answered it because you said you was you felt like you was drunk but in 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 the midst of the conversation of of you talking to the officer and you talking to the manager i was under the thing i was under the understanding that you know you was out of hours and you just refused oh, to move hours, and you, you sure. was out of hours and you just refused to move and you using the i can't move trope like everybody else uses like you know when <laughs> when a truck driver get into a parking spot that or he makes a parking spot he just turn around and just be like, "No, nah, bro, I can't move because of FMCSA and 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 rules and regulations." But I and I'm over here watching the video, like, "Bro, all you got to do is go into personal conveyance, move, and then go back out of personal conveyance." I don't, you know, I was just sitting there looking at it like, I don't see the big deal. But then, you know, like I said, and that's the and that's the whole thing about the Lockout Me and Podcast show because I get to actually hear your side of the story and get an understanding on why this and why that. Instead of me just yeah, looking, yeah. instead of me just watching the video and reacted off of it. You know what I'm saying? So thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you very bro. much. No, I appreciate you for coming on and 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 <laughs> and, and chopping it up with me, man. Thank you. So hey. You so at the end so in the morning you was able to you was able to get dressed go in there I guess take a shower uh go in there take a shower shit shave and shine oh they wouldn't let me take a shower in the morning oh they would oh oh they they was just, oh they must have been waiting on you to leave huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> making know, friends influencing people everywhere I go, brother. I know the manager. I I know the manager had to be livid, and I mean, you know that he oh, couldn't I, I, he couldn't get you to he couldn't get you to move. Did he? Did he come back out? Was he out there with the officers at the time, or did the officers go inside the store, or did he give you some type oh, of? Oh, they side went inside out? and talked to him. No, he he couldn't. He didn't go outside. He didn't want to be. He didn't want no part of me when the cops were there. And he, he sent guys out in the morning at like five o'clock in the morning to go bang on my door, which I mean, I was already getting up, but I was like, all right, guys, kind of fucking insult to the, that's the, the insult right. cherry on the top of the Sunday. They're like, I'm already going. And then they're like, yeah, you know, I was like, can I still have my shower I paid for? Like, no, nope. get out of here. I was like, <laughs> cool. Well, at least I'm not you got, going back. Did, did you get, did you get your money back? At least. Shit. I, nah. Nah, that's twelve dollars. I was like, bro. I just, I just wanted to go. I just wanted. To, I, I know. I, I was just you. like, you know, this, this ain't worth it. I'm out of here. I, I've spent twelve dollars on dumber stuff, like a pack of white claws. <laughs> 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 so, all right, so with, um, 
whoop that is there any is up in canada is there any uh major truck stops up there like like loves flying j's ta's is there any oh, yeah, we have up, flying there? J up there yeah we got like one ta that i've seen and we got a bunch of flying j's um we got esso shell and uh petro can up there that's about it. No, I mean, there's no some one offs out there. But any love? No, no love. No love. Well, we need loves, man. It's such a good stop. I like that place. Okay, okay. So for throughout the whole 22 years, man, have you, you have you have you been the owner operator for the old? I mean, for 22 years. How long have you been the owner operator for? I just I just bought this truck. Um, after the pandemic started, I got a wicked deal on it and I got a good contract with the company and I just started running like crazy, making my own money for once. So I've been driving other people's trucks before that. I had my own five ton for a little bit. That was cool. But for the most part, like, you know, ever since I got this truck, I haven't really left it. And a lot of people were saying too, that was a big deal. Like they're like, wait till you get home before you have a drink, you alcoholic. And I'm like, well, you know, you guys get to go home because you're company guys. I'm an owner operator. I haven't left this truck for more than a day since last April. Wow. Like, and that's, and that's understandable. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I get you, you guys, you know, you guys get, you know, 40, I mean, not 40, but there, you know, you guys get y'all 34, you guys get uh, you know, you guys get your 10 and all like that. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot yeah. of people turn around and be like, they don't understand why they sell liquor or not liquor, but they don't understand why they sell beer at the truck stops and stuff like that. Yeah. And and, and I look at that like, well, you you, you don't know. Maybe, maybe the dude is on his 34 or maybe he's at a hotel or whatever, whatever. You you don't know. So. Exactly. So if a guy's on his 34. And he's having like a beer after work, right? And he's kicked off his shoes, petting his dog and watching TV. And he ain't moving for two days. I mean, if that makes an alcoholic, I, I need to go get help. Like, <laughs> no, nah, like it's, it's, you're in your home, right? It's like this truck is my home more than my home is. Like I have a place back home, but like, bro, I'm not there maybe once a month. Once every two months. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, trouble is in the building. Thank you very much for coming on and chopping it up with me to lock out, man. I really do appreciate it. You guys know the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Man podcast show. Thank you very okay. much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. Trouble, man. Again, you know, let's uh let's not be strangers, bro. Let's uh let's let's get back together again. Hell yeah, brother. Anytime. Give me a shout. I will do that, man. You take it easy. Stay safe going across borders, man. Cheers, brother. You too. Keep your shiny side up.